Lesson 3-1C, Domain and Range, Interval Notation. So let's take a look at interval notation and the symbols associated with that. So in interval notation, we have two symbols. We have brackets and parentheses. Brackets mean that the number on the starting is going to be included. So if you had a closed circle in a graph like this, then it would have a bracket. The parentheses is if you have an open circle or an infinite domain and range. So if you have arrows that extend all the way to infinity, whether it's on the left or the right, that's what the parentheses are used. The brackets mean that the number is included as a starting point here or as an ending point. And there is a value associated with that. The parentheses means that there, there is an open circle. And that means that there's a hole in the graph, whether it's at the beginning or at the end. Or also, if there is no set point, let's say that one of these ends go to infinity or negative infinity, then that means that it's going to be a parentheses, because we don't know what kind of value uh, it's going to take us. It's going to be infinite. So quickly, uh, let's identify the domain of this function here. And if you remember from the last lesson, we're going to do lines all the way up to our first point. And in this case, our first point is going to begin at 4. Okay. So we begin our function at 4, and we continue going with those lines. And everywhere there's an intersection, the function still exists. And at the very end here, we end up at 12. So an interval notation, you can think about it as having your starting point, comma, and then your ending point. So 4 to 12, and then we go back and see whether these ends are going to be filled in or open circles or if they go to infinity. Okay, so if they're filled in, we have a bracket. If they're open circle, we have a parenthesis. All right, so that was for domain. Now let's do the same thing for the range. And for the range, we're going to go from the bottom up. And our first one we hit is located at 6. So we're going to start from 6. We're going to keep going all the way to 10. All right, so my range is going from 6 to 10. At 6, we have a closed circle, so print, uh, square bracket. And at 10, we have parentheses. Remember, domain, we're looking at the x values. And then range, we look at the y values. Let's take a look at the difference between inequality and interval notation. So if you are given a number line, whether this is along the x-axis or the y-axis, it's going to be the same. All right, the y-axis is going to have this in the vertical direction. So as an inequality, we try to see if we can explain the values along an interval. So up to this point, the inequality are for values that are less than this number. So my solution exists anywhere below this number, and that number is going to be negative 1. So let's just call this x. For values that are lack, uh, values of x that is less than negative 1. Okay, it's not equal to negative 1 because we have an open circle. And as an interval notation, we're coming from the negative infinity, and we're going to stop here at negative 1. And because infinity is never included, we have parentheses. And we have an open circle, we have parentheses here. An inequality that goes from a point to another set point here is going to look like this. So we begin at negative 3, and we go up to 6. And everywhere, my solution is in between those two points. So let's call that x. And because we have open circles, it's going to be less than x is going to lie between these two points. 
So you can read this as negative 3 is less than x is less than 6. And as an interval notation, we do parentheses on both ends because of the open circle, but we go from negative 3 comma up to 6. So this one, we do not need to establish the variable. Now what happens when we explain values that are going the other direction? So starting at negative 2, okay, we uh, have values that are greater than that. So x is going to be greater than negative 2. But because this is a filled in circle here, it's going to be equal to negative 2 as well. So greater than or equal to negative 2. And as an interval, we start off with negative 2. And we go up to, to the right all the way to positive infinity. And because we have a closed circle here, we have a bracket. Point exists there. But at infinity, we have a parenthesis because we don't know what that value this is going to end up. And for the last one, we go from a set point here, 13 to, to 20. And on the left-hand side, there is a point. So we can do less than or equal. But on the right-hand side, on 20, we only have less than because it's open circle. And x is going to be between those two points. And as an interval notation, we go from 13 up to 20. Bracket on the left-hand side, and then parentheses on the right-hand side. Now let's do inequality notation and interval notation for the domain and range of this graph. So let's do domain first. Doing the scan lines, we hit our first point at uh, 2, 4, 6, 7, negative 7. So we begin at negative 7, and we're going to continue our scan lines all the way to where the function ends. And that's going to be at this point here. Okay, so that is 2, 4, 5. We end at positive 5, and all the values in between for x is where my function exists. In the left hand side, I have a closed circle. So I'm going to have less than or equal. And on the right hand side, I have an open circle. So we're going to have less than. Now, the domain has an interval notation. Take these two values and go from negative 7, comma, up to 5. And then to decide whether we do brackets or parentheses, we look at the points here. There is a value here located. So we have bracket. But this one is empty, so we have parentheses. Okay. Now let's do the same and analyze the range. So starting from the bottom up, we're going to hit our lowest point here at negative 3. So negative 3. And we're going to continue hitting a point everywhere up to this point here at positive 1. So values of y um, that are in between negative 3 and positive 1. At negative 3, we have a closed circle, so it's going to be less than or equal. And at positive 1, we have an open circle, so we're just going to have less than. Now the range is going to be the same. We're going to go from negative 3 up to 1. And at negative 3, we have a bracket. And at 1, we have... A parentheses. Let's graph these values on a coordinate plane and let's see what the domain and range of these are. Let's assume this, these points are connected and make a function. So at positive 4, we're going to go down to negative 2. At negative 1, we're going to go up to positive 1. At 2, we're going to go down to negative 3. And at 3, we're going to stay at 0. So let's go ahead and connect these points. Now, not, this is not necessarily a linear equation. We don't know what these points are supposed to make. Uh, but the domain range is going to be the same regardless. So let's start off with domain. 
And if we begin from left to right, our first point we hit is at negative 1. And if we keep going, we're going to hit points all the way up to 4. And past 4, the function stops. So from negative 1 to 4. And at, at both endpoints, we have brackets. These points are included. They're closed circle. Now for the range, let's do the lines coming from below. And the first point I hit here is at negative 3. And if we keep going, we're going to hit more points all the way up to positive 1. So from negative 3 to positive 1, and both of these endpoints are going to have brackets. On the next problem, we're going to try to see if we can find the domain and range without having to graph these. Go ahead and try to see if you can find the domain and range from the set of points here. Pause the video. All right, now that we're back, it, this is really easy to find the bounds of, both of all these points. We, for the domain, we're going to look for the lowest x value and then up to our highest x value. So this is our lowest value here, negative 4. And again, this, these points, are we're assuming that they're connected and make a function. So negative 4 is going to be our lowest point. And then our highest point is going to be the other part of our domain. So if you look at this, the highest point on the x values here is going to be 8. So my domain is going to run from negative 4 up to positive 8. All right, because these are points, then they're assumed to be included. So we're going to have brackets here. All right, my range is going to look at the same from lowest to highest points. But we're going to be looking at the y values now. So the lowest y value in the set of all these points is going to be negative 6. OK. So from negative 6. And our highest point for the y values is going to be 9 here. So my range is going to go from negative 6 up to 9. And both of these are included. Now, if you want to verify these answers, you can try graphing it on a corner plane and try to see if it meets the bounds among the domain and the range. Example 2, find the domain and range from this graph. Again, let's start off with our lines here, from the, going from left to right. The first point we hit is at negative 4. So from negative 4, keep going. We hit a point everywhere until we were past 4. So from negative 4 up to 4, both of these points have are closed in, filled in. So we have brackets. Okay. Now for the range, we go from the bottom up. And the first point here we hit is at 0. We hit this point here and this point here. So we can begin at 0 and keep going up to this highest point here. Uh, this is where we're going to end our range. So that point up here is going to be 4. And all of these are included. We have set points here. And even though we don't have a set point here, it is, it is a point on the graph. If it wasn't, then there would be a hole here. So brackets on both ends. Go ahead and try this problem on your own. You can pause the video. Now that we're back, we're going to do the same thing. From left to right, the first point we hit is at negative 4. It's going to be open circle. And then we keep going and hit points along the way, all the way to 2. So my domain is going to go from negative 4 up to 2. Now on this end, we have a open circle, so parentheses. And at this point, we have a closed circle, so bracket. All right, so that was the domain. Now for the range, let's go from the bottom up. And the first point we hit is at negative 4. 
And we're gonna keep continue to hit points along the way, all the way up to positive four, where we have an open circle. So from negative four to positive four. At this one, we have a bracket. There's a point on the line. But at positive four, we have an open circle. So we're going to have a parenthesis. Example three. Let's try to see if I, we can identify the domain range of this. Now, if we begin from way over here to the left, right, we hit points everywhere. These arrows tell me that it's going to go up and to the left infinitely. So the domain is going to begin at negative infinity. And as we keep going, we're going to find the same thing is true on the right-hand side. The arrows are going to keep going up and to the right. And so my domain can be expressed as this, from negative infinity up to positive infinity. That's my domain of this function. And uh, now let's do the range. Okay, so the range is going to be infinite, but only on one end. If we go from the bottom up, okay, we don't start hitting points until we hit 2. So 2 is going to be my first point. And as you may guess, the arrows are going to go all the way up to infinite infinity. So the range is going to be infinite only on the... Uh, on the right hand side of this inequality. So we're going to go from 2 to positive infinity. At 2, we have a point, so we have bracket, but at positive infinity, we have parentheses. I right, go ahead and try this last problem on your own. You can pause the video. So, domain coming from the left, our first point begins at 0. So, zero and then we're going to continue going and if you see the arrow means that we're going to go all the way to infinity okay so from zero to positive infinity for the domain at zero we have a closed circle so bracket infinity is never included so always parentheses now from the bottom up we hit our first point at negative 2, and that's going to be a set point. So we have a bracket, and if we keep going, the arrow tells us it's going to go to infinity. So this line here is going to go on up to positive infinity, and then parentheses here.